Welcome to a refactor of our media scroller. I have just a few improvements I want to make. They're not a whole lot of like changes, but they were just accumulated as I looked at it again, as I read comments and we got input. I think there's some things we can do to improve this. And let's just kind of take 15, 20 minutes and make this a little bit easier to manage and work a little bit better and it just has some cooler features and stress tested. So anyway, one of the things I want to do is I want to make it a little more interesting because uh, there's the same pictures and there's only 10. So let's do a little bit of work and add some uh, more randomization and some more items just so this doesn't feel quite so bland. I think it just, it's just a little weird. Uh, so here, we'll take these 10 uh, figures and we're gonna put, so each of these are gonna have 20 in there now. And let's see, I'm actually gonna add an extra space so I know where that went. Uh, and here it is, and I'll grab the figure. It has this photos, uh, question mark zero. I'm gonna take that six seven eight nine ten and just add a, a zero in front of there so now we have uh some random ones in there and then one of the other things i want to do is while we're on this image tag oh, i'll do all these at the end i want to add a loading lazy attribute so that we get free lazy loading anything that's off screen is not going to be loaded until it gets scrolled in very cool and it's just an attribute away so we got to make sure we drop that on there so i'll hit save and let's just see what we got here we have many more items okay so 20 doesn't even really feel like that much so if you have uh some mock data and you're ready to go you should hammer this and send me a comment at how many items that you put into your list with lazy loading attribute or not i mean do a test with or without and tell me how many could you put into this media scroller before it really actually we could test it right now let's test it okay let's test it all right i've got like what i have them in my clipboard right so if i just I wasn't counting. Were you counting? Oh no, I don't know how many put in there. I. It's ten each time, so it's probably like, I probably put fifty or sixty in there. Right? You know how we can check, right? I grab this section, grab this element. Dollar sign zero is the node that you have. Dot children. Uh, we put ninety in there, so there's ninety. And you could also go like children. Uh, dot length. Yeah, so there's that. I didn't know there was child element count. I think, oh wait, I think I did know that. Anyway, um, so cool. So we have 90 in there, there's 100. Okay, so if we, let's do 100. Let's make sure there's 100 in there. Boop. And we didn't have lo loading lazy. Let's take all 100 of those and double it and see what happens. So here's our figure. Come down to where the blue ends because that means uh, we haven't that's where we've added some new code. Okay, and I'm gonna paste, there's another 100 uh, and another 100. I'm on a quite powerful machine, so it's probably not a super fair comparison. I don't think the browser gets to do anything for free because a lot of those images are repeated either. Cool, let's add loading lazy on these and see what happens. See how fast my keyboard can highlight all these image tags. Command D, do 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 This is super annoying and you stink at singing. You should stop. Good. Loading equals lazy and uh, we're done. Whee! Okay, uh, that's not very interesting to see different because these all have the same start. Oh, that was one of the things I wanted to fix. Did I? Over, oh no, we just add it. Okay, so here, I'm, I'm gonna do that really quick because it's driving me nuts. We're gonna grab these. One, two, three, four, all right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and add a two in front of those? Sure, because this other one, I'm gonna do a one. Uh, where do those start? Right here. This is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eight, two. All right, show me some, oh no, did I do the same thing here? All right. Okay, and we have loading lazy, and we have interesting stuff coming in. The only thing that's not that interesting are all the names of our mm, items, and I'm just gonna stop here. I can't, I can't, I, I don't wanna go get real data or work against it. I'm just resisting, okay? I'm resisting. This is a static demo, and look at, that. that is awesome. So I don't know how many we put in there. We put a lot in there. There's 200. Oh, we could count. Here's probably still stashed in our... Uh, child. Oh, oh, now there's 300. Okay, so there's 300 in there. It's no big deal. Uh, awesome. We could resize it. Why would it care? Yeah, it doesn't care. It's got a whole bunch of stuff off screen, right? And look at they're lazy loaded. And oh, there you start to see some get lazy, lazied in. 
Oh, these are so much shorter. See how lame they feel when there's just a few? It's way more fun to be like whoosh, 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 and whoosh your way around a, a scroll. I think that's why native apps are so fun because we feel so strong when we go and then we stop it like right at the picture and we show someone. We're like, yeah, I can see that fast. Yeah, can't you? Duh. Anyway, um, okay. So we've got additional items. We have random items. One of the things I wanted to do is we have a, uh, well here, and we have loading lazy on everything. Good, I think that's a good enough demo. Let's go just add some more into these, some of these other ones. Let's just, we're, while we're here, here, now that one has 30. And this one, oh, up here, this one. Find it, find the HTML, paste and paste. And that is, oh, that was, we got a random match in one of those. Okay. Uh, all right. That's cool. Let's hold off on our HTML. Let's go to our CSS. One of the things I wanted to do was uh, in our scroll, media scroller, we have a secret little element right at the end. Oh, no, it's at the end of a 300 list item now. I'm not going to scroll to the end of that. I could go get one of my other sections. Okay, whatever. Just trust me. Here, let's get one of these other sections. We got. We need to see it. Let's twirl it open. It's down here. Last, uh, last item, and after. I gotta scroll there so we can see it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Here it is. Last item after. Okay, so it's kind of uh, annoying that we have a last item. After. Let's put a last item before, so that we can just get. Um, so we can feel good about we've just put the same amount of spacing before and end with a same pseudo element and this is a symmetrical thing. This scroller wants that, both sides, right? Because what if we go uh, right to left language? We're still gonna want padding to be on that other side. So if we build this in the right way, we can get a left to right and right to left scroll snap media scroller with all the padding in the right spot. Woo! Uh, that's not exciting. This is not an exciting, it's not a thing that you shouldn't get that excited. That's not, you shouldn't do that. Uh, I did it, you shouldn't do it. Um, okay, we need to find our selector for our last, here it is, last child after. This one is gonna be, so we're just gonna say comma, first child, first child. I'm also gonna say first of type, just cause um, I want that to be very particular to the figure. It's just, it's just, you know, additional type safety. It's kind of additional to anyway, whatever. It's more specific. It doesn't give you a higher specificity, but it is uh, just more specific in general. Okay. And we have this right calculation, which I don't think our first of type is going to want. So we're going to take, because right, it's on the other side of this container. So we'll take that. And we did, oh, we got to put the logical versions in there as well. Okay. So if we've got right, I know that we're going to want to basically auto that out in this one because it does, it's not going to need that. It is going to want a left of essentially the same value that this is doing in here. We'll just take that and go with that. Okay, so now it should be left negative the space. So that's going to put it before our first item. So even though it's an after, it will look visibly before it. And uh, it's got an inline size, an inline block size. So everything is set here in the inline. But where's our inset block start? I want to also take right in, in inset block start at zero. So that's the top. We do want to show that we want inset end. Inset end is the other one we want to crush. Inset end is zero. Hey, look, it still doesn't like that one. Oh, it's inset. It's inset end. It's not inset inline end. Is it? Inset inline end. <gasps> That might not have been working this whole time. Wow. And we got it. Okay, so this means that we're gonna need inset inline start. I should just follow the patterns that were obviously there and looked at the red in the console. Where were y'all in the comments there? Come on. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, okay, wait, I saved because we've reset right. We've uh, inset inline end can also be auto because that's the same thing as right in Latin. Yes. Okay. Uh, because this is the first one. Yes. Right. Okay. If things go um, right to left, the item at, at the, the first child, anyway, whatever, hopefully you're following what it is I'm doing. The left now needs to become net, but that's only in Latin. That's why we have the inset inline start gets this value. Okay.
All right, let's test it out. We still have, that was all CSS changes, so they just live reloaded in our little layout here. You can see that we still have an after on our last item. So now the question is, is does our first of type have an after? It does, and there it is in the beginning. Wow, we did something first try. And even though we have padding, so do we still have padding on that parent? We have padding inline. Yeah, so we have all the padding set on the container. We're just not trusting it. Now we're doubling up on our inner spacing and just being symmetrical with it all. And here we have, um, again, we just, it's all working as expected, but we have these pseudo elements that are really nicely placed in there and they're waiting for a quick little test. Let's give them a quick little test. So if we change the scroll direction here of this one, so I'll say direction is right to left. Can see here's our scroller here's all our text looks great and we can scroll to the end <gasps> our padding look at it's not there so here's that's our first we have to go to the last item it's on the wrong side it's on the right side direction left to right we don't have the dir attribute on the oh we, okay post css is trying to do me a favor with the fallbacks here right to left just changed in the document and now I still don't have my padding. I still don't have my padding. I wish it would just use the physical property, but it looks like I have a selector here with higher specificity. Boop. Um, its calculation is negative on the left, but it needs to be on the in, uh, um, inset inline. This was left. Start. Right? Inset inline end. Yes. Oh, it's the end of the scroller. Oh, uh, uh, still right there. Is it because the right wasn't reset? Nope. Oh, that's just not looking right. Oh, wait, that actually gave us our padding back. Oh, but now we have a snap issue. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling like I've got two different things battling for attention on right to left. Let's reload and, and check it out. We'll change it to right to left up here instead this time to avoid confusing anything. And we still don't have our padding at the end there. And I think that's because one of our selectors is being rewritten. It, our logical properties don't look present at all in our output because here's our after. Here's our after. So I'm going to copy over our logical code Okay, so there's on that piece, and that was the, that was for both. Now we need to take the unique one here, and that's the one at the start up here. And it is way out in the boonies, I think. Oh, where it, yeah, look, it's, oh, cause it's the first one. The first one is fine. It's this last one. Oh, we were in the right spot. Nuts. All right, here we are. We're back here. Inset inline end. No, we want start auto. Go away, go away. Inset inline end gap. Okay, there's our pseudo element. Looks like it's drawing in the right spot. And now our scroll margin What did we write for it? We said, I think it only accepts logical properties. So we have scroll padding inline start. We just need to inline. Okay, I think we're almost there. Let's see. So we need to take our scroll padding here. It's not just on inline start, it's on inline in general, because now we have guaranteed padding on both sides. We're still in a right to left language here. Oh, that's still a really long one. That one is still not going to the edge. Still not going to the edge. And if we highlight it here and give it the logical properties that we want. Oh, wait, I was backwards with these, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That shifts, but look, we have, oh, we just, there, there's, there's some, oh, no, look, it, it woke up. It woke up. We got it. Okay, so we got to go in here to our after and fix these. This is start and end. And 
and it's not really pulling through my exact styles as I'm writing them. Okay, so that's fine. And then we go right to left up here. We still have our padding on the inset inline start. We are missing it on the inline end. And that's the same problem we were having before because our logical props are gone. So I think I need to go look at my logical properties. Oh, here, let's grab these from here. Uh, post CSS plugin. And here, let's let this wake up. It seemed to like wake up last time. Oh. There, it woke up. Okay, so, okay, so that, okay, I, I believe we have coded it right. Um, but our physical fallbacks are not, are they, they might even just be hurting us here. Let's take them out for right now. Let's see if they are making it difficult. Ah. Yes. We have fixed it by removing some of the physical work. So, okay, so I need to go look and see. I, I'm doing these by hand here, and I need to be relying on my plugin more. Um, Okay, so here, I'll just take those out. Those might also have just like come over from a previous set of work, but anyway, if you stick with all logical properties, it looks like you are in the clear and everything is good. So there's no bugs. We have, again, we have just gone in and did something really complex. Our exact media scroller now works uh, in any direction that it's being used, uh, which is very cool. Uh, okay, so here we'll go back to left to right. Sweet. Um, we have lazy loading across all these native images here, or all these images. We've got consistent spacing. Um, let's add some keyboard accessibility. So right now, if I hit tab, I'm able to go into the scroll section and sort of like, if you notice, it's snapping. These snap to each item. I'm just going left and right on the keyboard, and I can hit tab again to go into the other control or the other scroll zone. But what I'm interested in is these are links. These are destinations. If you were on a switch, if you were using a keyboard, if they, th these are things that are, you need to tap on or select and, and activate and go to. They look like pages. We're going to wrap them in a link tag today because that's a really easy way to indicate that something goes to a new page and has um, uh, some interactive things for your keyboard. It's pretty much a freebie that indicates this thing should be targetable by a keyboard and other things. So we're going to give these a hash here and here we'll just do a whole bunch of these at the same time. Oh, this is, mm, I should probably be using global search. This is, I'm sorry everyone for you watching this. This is, this is not fun. This is just a lot. I should have done the more items at the end. I don't think these things through though. Okay, so here's our figure. All of them are now surrounded with this. Now we need to go to all the closing figure tags. I'll put a closing anchor tag on there. But that's okay. This gives me time to give you a word from our sponsors, which is Chrome, I guess. I'm on CSS DevRel. Uh, I love CSS so much that apparently I can do this now for my living. It's way more than this part that you see here, but I really like it. And look, I'm there at the end of the scroll. So now I can get off that topic and close my anchor tag. All right, let's see what we broke. We broke a lot of stuff because our layout was depending on a child figure being a direct descendant of our scroller. Actually, look, it's right here in our CSS. We could probably cheat and just go like this and be fine. Which you can do. If you want to do that, you can do that. I'm just, I think I'm going to take all of this figure code and just move it out of here because that was getting really dense anyway. Look at actually, that really is nice. Cleans that up. I want to paste it here. Uh, paste it here. It was special, special so it, nah, I guess it, formatting. Here we go. Um, because that's uh, something you could name a component and do all sorts of things with. Or if you're using CSS modules or, or whatever, you might not need to name this at all. You can reference the node type itself. It's up to you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to save like that. We do have some corrections though. So here, if I go, uh, this is direct. So now I do want to target these anchors and I just want to set their text decoration to none, right? and their color to inherit because their color should be coming. They, yeah, they're not a link at this point. They are a presentation. Um, oh, I have uh, a bug in my, let's see. Unclosed block, unclosed block. Mm. So here's a block, it's closed down here. Un oh, doop. I think we got it. All right. Okay. And then that came back. We are, we lost our gap though. That was here. What happened? Our gap is coming from inherit. Ah, uh, mm, if I said gap inherit here, will that pass it down to its child? 
there's a lesson on inheritance right there. I don't know um, who needed to see that, <laughs> but that's cool. Um, it is awkward though for me to give a gap um, to an anchor link. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off of there and use, let's see, gap was coming from this property here, multiplying it by two. It's just, it's coming from somewhere higher up in the stack here. Okay, so it's on the section. And if that gap is on the section, we don't need to be using inherit here. We can just reference it directly. And was it just, so it just needs to be this. No, there was a reason it was, I pulled over the divide by two. Right? Wasn't there? Let's go back. Gap inherit, gap. Oh yeah, because that's what it's doing up there. I need to be inheriting the type that's here, which is being calculated and divided by two. Great. Okay. Now, all we did, we wrapped them in links. We adjusted some of our selectors so that our style stayed the same. I'm going to hit tab. Um, nothing has changed here except I am. That's not an acceptable focus state. Do you see what I mean? We have, let's see, where is all the spacing coming from in here right now? Here's our, oh, we have the padding is on this horizontal. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And coming from the header here as well. Yeah, we have padding. Okay, and the padding is the same as the gap. Okay, so what do I want here? I want padding on the top of here, which is going to be frustrating because that's going to mean I need to get rid of that. That's okay. Okay, let's work through this. So first, we're going to take the gap out of the section. Wow, that means the section one, but wasn't this using it? Header was using gap. Okay, so that's just the space. So really, it shouldn't be gap anyway. It should be called something else. It should be called um, common space. Uh, and this is probably you'd have this in your design system as like space one or two or spacing like something like that. I'm gonna leave it for now. So even though we're overloading the term gap, um, I don't I don't mind. Let's just keep it for now. That's something that you can do in your own refactor, I suppose, if you want to make that a little bit better. There should be you should have a spacing system. It's sort of be like this spacing one two three four and you can change them at media queries anyway um what was our task oh yeah I, this was unacceptable so we're going to come here and just pull the gap pull the grid gap great and then go to our horizontal and give it a look all this padding and all the sides but not that one so we'll just say padding and paste it because then we'll have um padding on all sides okay so uh, now we have padding on all sides of our scroller. When we scroll our scroller, nothing is really visibly different here, um, except that we now know that the spacing here is not coming from a grid gap, which I don't know. I think it makes more sense when we do this. Oh, we need a gap as well. And let's see, because the, mm, the focus lo looks good here. I think we could, lose some on the no that's part of the scroll bar height is why we have a little bit extra there and it looks nice when we're here i really like the symmetries we're going through here right we have the same space up here same space blah 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 same space everywhere this is half of that that's just really nice this is like a quarter of it i don't know what that is we'll figure that out uh, it looks fine but this this can't touch that's not okay and that means we have to increase our space here let's just do that and see and see if it's as terrible as we fear so um, we can even just take this and say calc gap divide by two. Great, so now we have it in here. Let's pull open our, yeah, let's look at that. Okay. And we'll focus it, right. Right, right, right. Okay, that looks fine to me. I don't, you know, more space is not necessarily an enemy. A lot of people try to avoid it and they're like, it's too much space. Like usually users don't complain about that unless they're working on like a spreadsheet at which point every little thing needs to be packed in there. There's like use cases for density, but I don't know, more space is usually better. Okay, so if that's the case, let's just do this. I'm gonna take this, I'll do calc. It seemed fine, um, divide by two. And so we're gonna do a little bit of there and we'll come into padding. So we have padding in line and padding block end. So now we can get rid of all the logical uh, sides of that and just here go straight into padding all sides, which I think that's good. I bet this is where you usually graduate your scrollers into. All of your scroll views probably eventually get this sort of padded nature because a scrolling space 
it's not usually shrink wrapped and and has no bleed right even the one even the one we built here it goes edge to edge but we gave it padding it has space otherwise it would feel cramped and right now it doesn't okay let's go to our layout and we'll turn off that section Doop. scroll in here oh there's our focus ah uh, see this focus looks like whoever built this was planning and cared about folks coming from keyboards and other places and if we go tab again now we're sh okay actually check this out we're going to do a really cool property on here because that's crampy i don't like crampy we can come in here to our figure and it's actually the anchor that's being focused here we can go focus oh we're gonna have to say on focus actually maybe not focus outline offset why am i not getting outline offset yes it's, it's, i don't know three pixels right now quit asking me questions i don't know the answers to no more than that though why didn't you tell me it was going to be so little Okay, how about that? Aha! Okay, is that like perfectly in between there? Oh, it's almost. Should we try eight? An eight is a weird number. Let's do our gap. Let's do um, get calc. Get oh no, what did I paste? Pasted some junk. Okay, calc. Close it. We'll say var dash dash gap divided by four. Aha! Tricky. This is. We really should have a spacing system right now. Oh, that's. Uh, Hello. That's really nice. The double outline is cool. It's a new Chrome thing. Um, I like it. Our scroller updates. We can use our arrows to kind of peruse through, go through with the tabs. Excellent. We should probably have some skip links. We could do some really cool. Okay, so if anyone is really interested in accessibility and wants to improve the user experience here, there is a number of things. In fact, this design could use some improvements. <laughs> I just in multiple ways like one of my things I like to do is like how many are here why make it a mystery computer do you know how many are there just tell me tell me how many are right here and give me a button to go see all of them like it in like a flat view like let's say I just want I'm like tired of I'm just like okay I like this section let's like, click a button go see all of them take up the whole screen in a grid and show me all these items um, anyway I'm just ranting about accessibility right okay I like what we did here we need to set this outline in our CSS, horizontal media scroller, anchor right here. Look at this, we're barely writing anything and we're gonna reach a lot more users. This is a problem. That's too much space. That's too much space. This is where like Visbo could come in and be like, yeah, that's just too much space. I could see, but let's, mm, hmm. Whoa, whoa, DevTools freaking out. There we go. Yeah, the gap is hurting us here. Hmm. I don't really know a way around this right now because even if, right, let's get rid of this. Right, when we're focused in this way, this isn't annoying at all. Although look, we can barely see our, our blue border, which is okay. Um, we could barely, we could do that on the inside probably. If we shrunk our focus ring in, we could use less padding on the top. Let's try that. Okay, so we had um, we had all the oh, let's see, we had all the padding sides broken out before, which was nice because we could separate out. But we're gonna have to do inline. So that's matching the padding that we have coming from our sentinel elements that are sort of creating spacing, and then we're gonna do padding block, and the top is going to be a half. This is getting really common that we do this, huh? Oh, bar, uh, gap divided by two. And then the bottom one can just be your like regular bar gap or whatever. Okay, so we shrunk it there a little bit. We still have a gap coming from our parent grid. And, oh, I wanted to shrink the outline. So the outline offset on a media scroller would be really neat to see a little inset. So if I go negative, Five picks. What do we see? Look at that. We start to see the rounded corners and it looks just a little bit more pro. That I did like that it was edge to edge though before. Five pixels seem to be, and I don't know if offset lets me go around in like a different amount in each one. Ah, but look, we lost our symmetry. Hmm. What to do? The spacing here looks nice. The spacing there looks nice. 
Hmm. What do I want to do from a design perspective here? Look at all these anchors. That's so funny. Boop. Boop. From a design perspective, what do I want to do here? Scroll outline offset. I don't think this takes different offsets. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, here we can simulate focus here. We can go um, focus. Now we can go style focus. It'll maintain. So let's see. See if we pull it too far in, it's no good. There's zero. It should definitely be at like negative negative five pixels looks really healthy. Okay, look, that's what we had. Okay, so negative five, that's what we'll, where we'll keep it. Our scroller is now awkwardly, mm, let's take the same off the bottom. Let's be symmetrical. Let's lop this second definition off. So now we have symmetrical padding on the top and the bottom. That tightened us up considerably. So we might have to reevaluate, but honestly, that looks pretty good. That looks cool. We have uh, some better spacing all around here. This is looking crampy. Interesting that that pops out of it. Let's see. Hmm. Our, our scroll bar is in a good spot. I'm kind of cool with that. It might even be in a better spot than it was before. It had a little too much space before. I am going to call it on that. I think that's cool. So we did... Uh, so an out outline offset here, so it stays in view, and we give these an outline offset. And these, we could even give a cool outline offset color right now if we wanted to. Um, and let's let's try that. Let's try that with a little focus style. So here, we'll go back to focus. We'll say outline offset, oh, outline color is hot pink. Uh, outline width is one pixel. Should get rid of the double. Nope. No, outline width is not what I want, apparently. Um, and hot pink, is that what I want? Not really at this time, but that's just showing that you can change it. And so here, if I continue going into these, um, well, if I went and set their color, they would be pink. All right, let's just check that out. We've got lazy loading. Everything looks good. We can tap through. We get nice um, native. So whatever platform you're on, you're going to get a different select here, which I think is really nice too. In fact, you'd see a really nice one on Safari and other browsers where there's a, a really nice transition here. Could we check that out? Let's check that out. I got Safari. Boop. Here. Hi, Safari. What do you think of our little scroll areas? And tab focus. Oh, tab in the page, focus in the page. Focus in the page, please. Isn't there focusable items in here? What about all the links? Do I need to I don't I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Well, I, I think I just I'm not on a I'm not coming from that kind of scenario. I have to initialize the keyboard mode, maybe? I don't I don't know. Anyone want to help me out here why I didn't get to see my focus rings come through as I'm hitting tab with some links? Is it because the links don't go anywhere? We could test that. Let's give the first ones a couple of destinations. Um, high, so maybe like hash is ignored as something that you don't go to, and this would be like homepage. OK, now they have destinations, and it doesn't matter. This can still go right into them. And look, I could see at the bottom like where they go. This one goes to home page. This one goes to high. Huh. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. I think we have uh, made an improvement here. Okay, this video I think got way longer than I wanted it to, but we went over some really important stuff. Like I really like how this turned out. I think that's an important thing to be considerate of. And look, we still got to maintain all of our spacing and all of our harmony, but now we have keyboard support can move our way through here it also stays snapped like and we added kind of like virtualization with the um, lazy loaded images and we added so many more images and look this thing doesn't even care we can grab this and whip it through uh, let's see eh. oh is it dragging no i just didn't oh yeah here we go okay so that's how fast that is how many items do we put in there again two two hundred three hundred three hundred cool all right so there's 300 items in there uh, that's some cool stuff, right? We can really chuck a lot of work at the browser and have it do it 
Um, and we can have our cake and eat it too. We've got a grid layout that I think is really manageable. In fact, there's only one other thing. I guess there's one more thing I wanted to do to this layout, which is I think ellipsis is kind of a cop-out, a cop-out of accessibility. Like now we have to do extra work to make sure that this full thing can be read by a screen reader and a user says the walking what? If they don't know what the show is, they're completely cut off from the rest of the content. And I don't know if that's the right way to do it. So I'm gonna get rid of overflow hidden white space no wrap and text overflow ellipsis and I'm gonna let the web do what it does best which is uh, continue to lay out and be um, a hero even when content can get a little unruly where I think like if you're on a set top box and you've got a, a you know Netflix remote and they're building that app and whatever platform they're doing text overflow ellipsis is gonna be much easier but the web has a very very advanced text layout engine especially and with scroll stat points like you can let it do all of the work and so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna so anyway I took it off let's just see if there's really anything that negative no my line height looks great the whole entire grid adjusts it doesn't care we can go make these much longer and it wouldn't make a big deal and I think that this is this is better I don't know look I don't think that's hard and I don't even think that looks bad in fact, I think that is kind of cool. Now, it might get to be an issue if it's super long. Let's see. Ah, dude, this word is easier. Easier. Here we go. Fear the Walking Dead. Um, we'll just copy it and paste it a couple more times. Okay. Um, my head bug. And, yeah. So, do we need line height on this? What is the line height? 1.2? Ah! 1.3... I think 1.2 is oh, it's a little tight. We could do 1.3. No, 1.2 is fine. I'm going to leave it at 1.2. Whenever we decided that, oh, that was because we had some descenders, I think, that we didn't want to cut off. Um, and that's as tight as we can go. So I don't know if we want as tight as we can go in a scenario where... No, we're going to do 1.3. Does that make sense? We tightened it because we were cutting it off and doing ellipsis. But now um, we don't want that shrink wrap wrapped effect. We're not spacing it with other items. And so we're going to let it have uh, it, a, a healthier line height that will allow more uh, words to stack underneath in a healthier way. They won't ever, their ascenders and descenders will never clash because um, we're not trying to shrink wrap anything. So let's go find where that is. That was the fake caption that's down here. We'll change uh, this line height to one three, I think it was, right? Oftentimes I'll do one five. Um, what's one four? See, look, you can't even really, and 1.4 is going to be just a little healthier. 1.5 is pushing it. Okay, I'm going to do 1.4 for these particular titles. And that is my modification. That's my web version of this. So whenever you see this in a native app, uh, well, and here, tell me, someone shout out, like, was that a cop-out or, or was it a design decision? Like, why why was the ellipse chosen? And has it been rethought ever since? Um, can you do a reflow? Can you let titles continue to go? We could, you know, try doing a length clip on the third line or something, which is another popular thing to do, which I believe the web can do uh, pretty consistently now with line clamp. So anyway, what was the reasoning? And do you like this better? Or is this really obnoxious to, to see it this way? Um, yeah, let's, let's chat about more layout stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching this super long video and I hope you're enjoying all these little nitpicky lessons and, or lessons or just ex explorations that you're following along. Uh, and I will see you later. Take care. Bye.